My name is Laurie Slapp. I'm the chair of the Warrant Committee. And what I'd like to do now is to give you an overview of the FY21 budget as we all prepare for town meeting coming up on June the 16th. Um, I will be going over some of the highlights. I hope you have had a chance to look over the Warrant Committee report that was distributed by the town clerk, or if you haven't, certainly encourage you to do so. Um, what I'd like to do now is to go through and discuss a little bit about the impact of COVID-19, give you a, uh, a highlights of the budget discussing revenues and expenditures, um, give you an update on where free cash stands at this moment, and then discuss the risk to the FY21 budget as well as the challenges for FY22 and the years beyond that. So let's start by looking at the next slide, which will show you the outlook for FY21 before we hit the COVID out outbreak. Um, back in February, the town administrator and school superintendent gave a presentation to the uh, select board, the, select, the school committee, and the warrant committee presenting the FY21 budget. Um, the operating budget, even at that point, was very tight. I'm trying to stretch the 2015 override one more year by using one-time sources of revenue and controlling expenses as much as possible. So in that February budget, the town operating budget was up only $117,000. It was essentially flat. And the school operating budget from the general fund rose 3.1%. Um, on the capital budget, roads and sidewalks were up at $2 million, and dis the discretionary budget was up about $1.5 million. And at that point, we also knew that the FY21 budget would include the second round of financing for the middle and high school, which led to a $5 million increase in debt service, which shows up in fixed costs. On the next slide, I'll show you how the FY, excuse me, the COVID-19 outbreak um, affected revenue projections. In March, we knew that the revenue was going to be unfortunately less than had been projected just a month before. Um, and now we expect that revenue will be $5 million less than those February projections. This table shows just some examples of the impact. State aid is going to be hit very hard, we expect, um, with a 25% decline from the FY20 level. So that will reduce the budget, reduce revenues, excuse me, by $3.2 million. New growth and building permits will also be hit hard. They are down 0.4 and 0.2 million dollars respectively from what was initially projected in February. And the excise and meals tax are also down by a total of 0.3 million dollars. Um, the next slide shows how that affected expenditures. And the goal here was to meet these reduced revenues without reducing employee FTEs or FTEs meaning full-time equivalents. So this these are just, again, some examples, not entirely comprehensive. Uh, please refer to the Warrant Committee report for the full list. Um, but for example, the school budget eliminated $1.02 million from their budget, including 5.8 new full-time equivalents that had been planned at the Chenery and the high school to address the uh, enrollment bubble that is hitting those schools right now. Um, Road improvements, the entire $1.7 million has been deferred and will not be completed or begun in FY21. Um, discretionary capital budgets are also cut by $5 million. Those were also deferred. Um, town salaries and overtime experienced a half a million dollar cut. Um, the recreation budget was cut to $0.3 million. This is essentially achieved because the Underwood pool is going to be closed for the upcoming season. And another example is the OPEP contr contribution, which is $0.45 million less than had been anticipated back in February. The next slide gives an overview, uh, gives, presents this in a pie chart, which I think is just another um, easy way to see the relative shares of the revenue sources. And as you'll see, property taxes account for 82% of total revenues. Um, state aid comes in at about 6.8%, and then the uh, local receipts and free cash and other are about 5.5% each. Now we'll turn to the expenditure side, starting with the next slide. And here this gives just a summary of the uh, impact to the operating budget, the capital budget, and fixed costs. The town operating budget is going to be reduced by 1.9% in FY21 in the recommended budget. The school operating budget increases only 1.4% uh, 
Um, although there is a caveat here that if we include grants and revolving accounts to the general fund, the total school operating budget, in fact, increases 3.3% to $71.3 million. And the capital budget, as has just been mentioned, is slashed, is down 47%, and this is the discretionary projects. And fixed costs rise by 19.7%. This is largely due to the second round of borrowing for the middle and high school. Um, if we, this table right here shows an increase of 3.1%, but if we were to take out the $5.1 million increase in the um, debt servicing due to the middle and high school, um, the, actually the operating budget would decline by 0.8%. So it is a very tight outlook that we face in 21. The next slide again shows everything in a pie chart, and this shows the um, components of Article 9 that will come before town meeting. And here I'd just like to run through um, some of the different departments so everyone is clear as to what is included here. The schools make up a 46.9% share of the expenditures here, or excuse me, 46.5%. Um, public services, which is shown on the left here in green with $13.6 million. And I just want everyone to be sure they understand this includes community development, facilities, recreation, and the DPW. Um, public safety accounts for 10%. That's about on the other side of the screen here. This is police, fire, and the uh, emergency management agency, Belmont BEMA. Um, we also have general government, which is accounts for 3.6%. Um, it's shown at the top here, this gray sliver. And this includes the town clerk, the town administrator, accounting, um, the IT department, human resources, the treasurer, and the assessor's office. Um, we also have human services shown in the red sliver off to the left. Um, that's $3.2 million, and that includes the Council on Aging, the library, and the health department. Um, as we've talked about before, the debt and interest on the debt is a relatively big sliver off there to the left at $15.6 million. And the other thing, I would just like to draw your attention to that is new this year is the regional school assessment, which is the vocational educational segment. Um, this in the past has been entirely absorbed by Minuteman, but as Belmont is no longer a member of Minuteman as of July 1, um, this assumes that 45 students, I'm, I'm just gonna make sure I give you the correct information here. Um, it assumes that 41 students will be at Minuteman in FY21 an additional 25 will attend vocational school, either come off the waiting list at Minuteman or attend other community vocational programs. And it also assumes that three buses will be needed for these 25 freshmen to attend other schools. If we move to the next slide, we'll look at the fixed costs in more details. And here again, I draw your attention to the debt and interest, the second set of bars um, to the right. And here I would also like to make sure that I share the good news um, that in late May, Belmont um, received the triple A rating again for booties and standard and poors. So is actually able to borrow, um, excuse me, receive $103.5 million um, and financing $97.215 million for the next 30 years. And a great thanks here go to um, Town Treasurer Floyd Carmen and his team for these very favorable results for Belmont taxpayers. Um, the other thing I'd like to point out on this chart is just the capital roads and sidewalks, which is the fourth set of bars over going to the right. And there you just see how the uh, roads budget has completely disappeared in FY21. If we turn to the next slide, it will show the update on free cash, um, the unreserved fund balance. This is something that typically the Warren Committee uh, updates every year, so I wanted to be sure to include it here. Um, at the top, you'll see the certified free cash as of July 1st, 2019, as certified by the DOR. Um, out of that total, we took $1.5 million for the General Stabilization Fund and $0.35 million for the fire pumper back at the uh, town meeting last fall. Uh, we will also take out $3.79 million for this year's operating budget. This is a higher number that has been in FY20. And the OPEP contribution, as mentioned before, is a lot less than in prior years. It's at the minimum $50,000. So in total, you'll see that we have a net 
free cash after these appropriations. It stands at $2.4 million. Um, as is written at the bottom here, the town's free cash guideline recommends a free cash balance of 3 to 5% of general fund revenues. And if we did that calculation 3% times the general re fund revenues, the uh, guidelines would show that there should be $3.97 million um, in reserve as in contrast to what is currently forecast to be here at $2.4 million. Um, we know that free cash gets replenished every year um, when revenues come in higher than expected or expenses are lower than expenses, but especially this year with the COVID uh, epidemic, COVID pandemic, excuse me, it's a little bit unclear as to what we can expect. Um, last, I'd like to turn to the risks to the FY21 budget. Um, again, COVID-19 really dominates everything this year. We don't know exactly what the overall economic impact can be. It could be a show a deeper decline that is forecast um, for in, in this FY21 budget. Of course, we certainly hope it could be better. It's entirely impossible, I think, at this point to see exactly what will come over the coming weeks and months. Um, it's also uh, COVID-19 will have a profound impact on town services, we expect. Um, they are currently developing plans on how best to reopen school in September. Plans are also underway for the library, the Council on Aging, the Recreation Department, and it's unclear what the impact on services will be and how that will impact expenditures as well. Um, also, we don't know exactly what, if any, will impact it will have on employee, employee illness. Um, we know that COVID-19 is highly contagious, and there is always the fear that employees will become exposed or become ill. And then, um, of course, it will be uh, completely awful for them to suffer themselves as they go into quarantine for a couple of weeks. Um, and we don't know what the impact will be on overtime costs, um, and especially if it were to hit one shift, for example, in the public safety department. And lastly, we don't really know yet um, what will be, how much will be reimbursed by, at the federal and state levels. Um, the town is actively seeking reimbursement, but is unclear as to exactly what that amount will be and what the timing might be. Um, other risks that I just listed here, uh, facilities uh, shows up on a list like this perennially. We know that there is a lot of deferred maintenance and it's certainly a risk that there will be unanticipated maintenance needs in FY21. Um, as mentioned before, free cash is below the recommended guidelines. Um, as we have tighter projections of revenues and expenditures, it's excuse me, unclear exactly what the uh, replenishment will be. It might be less than has been in many of the prior years. Um, healthcare costs are always variable. Um, this year in FY21, we're actually projecting a 3% increase in healthcare costs, which is much less than the 8% that was in FY20. Um, this is due to the plan design changes that were put into effect um, earlier this year. Um, Belmont self-insures, as we all know, um, so that if it were to come in higher than 3%, um, any change would come out of the town's health insurance trust fund. And lastly, but probably very importantly, certainly, uh, is, are the compensation costs. Um, compensation costs have an enormous impact on the budget. They actually account, employee compensation accounts for over 65% of Belmont's operating budget. Um, and all the union contracts are under negotiation, under negotiation currently. Um, so we want to raise this of great importance for the um, school committee and the select board and the town administration. The next slide goes beyond FY21, just to list some of the challenges for the following year, FY22, and the years beyond that. And of course, I can't, don't want to stress uh, or want to stress again the importance of these union contracts and the compensation costs. Um, they will impact FY21. They're generally three-year contracts, so that goes beyond uh, the upcoming year and will likely impact at least the next three years. So uh, this is critically important. Um, in 22 and beyond, we expect that COVID-19 will still be with us in some form. Uh, it's in, prolonged impact on economic activity is certainly something we have to watch very closely. Um, and then of course, there are the budget gaps. We have been successful in stretching out these one-time funding sources for FY20 and 21 to enable us to continue 
um, to provide services without going to the uh, voters for an operating override, but these will not be available um, beyond this year. Um, some examples are the uh, special education reserves, which were capped um, for this budget. As I said before, the roads budget was entirely deferred. Um, there's an increased use of free cash. These are only three examples of um, these one-time funding sources that are not sustainable. Um, we have deferred capital needs, which will be with us um, for the coming years and certainly present a myriad of challenges. And finally, here on the list is what it all is at its core. The key challenge that we face is this fundamental structural deficit. Um, Prop 2.5 and new growth allows budget increases of 2.5% to 3.5% without additional revenue sources. Um, and that's simply not going to be sufficient to provide the level of services that Belmont is used to and would like. Um, so <clears throat> there is going to be a need for an operating op override in the coming year um, to support FY22 and future years, or Belmont will face a significant cut in services. And I, I'm sure this will be an issue that will be of prime importance um, to all of us, to all of us town meeting members and the select board will make a decision on the timing and the amount of an override if they decide to put it forth to the voters in the coming months. And then I will sign off by extending my great thanks and recognition to, um, to the town administrator, to the uh, superintendent, to colleagues on the select board, the uh, school committee, the capital budget committee, and to all members of the Warren committee. I think it's been a great deal of collaboration in a very difficult spring. So thank you all. And that is it. I will see you at town meeting on the 16th. Thank you very much.